So good morning or good afternoon or good evening if you're calling from Europe today. Uh, welcome to Infoblox's webinar, Upgrading Your Network Services with a specific emphasis on DNS traffic control. Uh, this is the second in a webinar series. Um, again, we'll focus on DNS traffic control in, uh, in this session. And my name is David Vanesky. I'm a product marketing manager here at Infoblox, and I'm joined by Roger Barlow. Uh, Roger, you want to introduce yourself, please? Sure. My name is Roger Barlow. I'm a senior product manager with Infoblox, and I focus on a, a number of products in our portfolio, DNS traffic controller being one of which. Thank you. So um, with no further ado, let's get into the agenda and uh, then walk into the the, the meat of the session. So what we're going to talk about really quick is just a very um, very brief introduction on the blocks uh, and what we do. Uh, then we'll talk about the Trinsic Upgrade Program. Uh, we also call it the Core Bundle uh, Promotion Program. We'll spend some time on that, giving you some of the uh, the tips of the wave as well as some of the details. Then we'll spend some uh, time with a little bit of a deep dive on the DNS traffic control, uh, why it's important, and how we address that as a uh, uh, as a need as well as a solution. Then we'll suggest some next steps for those of you who find an interest in um, either the upgrade program, DNS traffic control, or anything else you might touch on. And then we are reserving time at the end for questions and answers. Uh, if you have any questions and they come up along the way, please input them using the Q&A chat uh, window at the bottom. We'll collect them all up at the end uh, and then uh, address as many as we can in the time allowed. If there are any questions we cannot address, we'll get back to you directly via email. So let's talk about the Infoblox core bundle. Um, in Infoblox, uh, we believe, and I think you probably all believe too, that any that any network of value needs DHCP, DNS, and IP address management. Um, that those are core network services. But as the slide says, there really is more to the core. Um, to make a a modern network. Uh, has to has to uh, be efficient. Uh, it has to be well managed, and it has to be uh, to make optimum use of all resources. So, to that end, um, we are looking at the core as more than just DDI. We think uh, a true core uh, set of services needs to include uh, efficient streamlined load balancing to make the most uh, or best use of, of resources. It also needs to include protection from DDoS attacks. Um, DDoS attacks running on, on DNS, which is a very common threat vector. Um, to not protect against those is to leave a door open and really is not um, is far from best practice today. So that has, so DDoS protection has to be uh, considered part of the new core bundle of services. Reporting and the associated analysis you can do uh, simply speaks to the fact that it's difficult to manage what you can't see. Uh, and certainly, and you certainly want to be able to report on what you can manage. So a so a foundation of reporting and, and analytic functions, um, we think, again, is essential to a modern, well-managed network. And finally, threat protection. Um, malware and data exfiltration are extremely uh, important exposures for, for a modern, high-value network. Uh, not, not guarding against those um, is simply um, uh, an accident waiting to happen. And we think that uh, addressing that is part of the the modern core fund with network services. To wit, uh, or let me just show you how that lays out. Uh, in this particular diagram, you see in, in the middle uh, of, of this uh, Coblox DDI, it's depicted here on hardware appliances. Of course, it doesn't have to be on hardware appliances. But it is flanked by services, um, a virtual ADP to protect against DDoS attack from any side of the network, in or out as well as our active trust service, which is something we talked about in our first webinar, to protect, to protect against exfiltration and malware. Uh, aside this is our reporting and analysis function, which lets you understand what's going on, uh, have client-level visibility into what's going on in the network. And then, and then uh, DTC, uh, DNS traffic control, to uh, optimize use of resources. This is um, this is kind of a the top level message here is you know, we don't compromise. Um, adding these services to the core bundle gives you high availability. It it improves uh, and enhances application response time and the end user's experience. 
And of course, your security is enhanced as well as your visibility to what's going on uh, in your core network. So we look at this as the new standard for DDI uh, beyond just DHCP, DNS, and IP address management. So now that brings us to our, our promotion. Um, for a limited time, uh, we, are offering, we are offering special pricing uh, on the new core bundle of DDI plus uh, VADP, DNS traffic control recording and analytics. Um, who is eligible for it? Um, any, any customer or any prospect, um, if, you, if you're looking to go in this direction, um, this is, uh, we have special pricing available to you. Uh, the one, one stipulation is that uh, if you have first generation uh, appliances, we, uh, you must upgrade them to our, to our latest generation of, of Trinsics. The advantages from this are um, there's, there is special, uh, special pricing on, on the subscription bundle. The discounts will vary based on volume and, and, uh, and a number of specific configuration uh, factors, but uh, the pricing will um, re reduce significantly first year out, outlay, cash outlay, as well as uh, shift uh, money from CapEx to OpEx. The, the, uh, we're using a subscription model here. Uh, as opposed to a um, uh, upfront payment to reduce your upfront cost, um, and the subscription model allows license portability. So you can you can license the software and move it from a physical appliance to a virtual appliance to the cloud without the cost. So as your data center evolves uh, and your needs change, uh, our our product in fact uh, flexes with you. And some of the refresh issues that uh, you may have experienced in the past in the, in the past really go away because the subscription model uh, includes updates and it allows you to move the software where it needs to be. And finally, some of the terms that uh, that may be of interest to you. Uh, this offer, I said it was for a limited time. Uh, the uh, you have to license the software by July 31st of 2018. Uh, you can you can su subscribe to the software for one year. Uh, as little as one year or as many as five. Um, and the bundle consists of, again, uh, it, it will, uh, of the appliances, physical, virtual, or cloud, so running DDI, active trust, any version, uh, DNS traffic control, and soft, software ADP, as well as the reporting and analytics uh, package. So this, this bundle of services at a um, very attractive price for uh, an interesting offer for, for people who are um, looking at their network as a, a critical asset that needs to be protected and optimized. So with no further ado, let me hand it over to Roger, uh, and he can talk about DNS traffic control. Great. Thanks, David. So uh, again, just to sort of summarize what, what David said, uh, you know, DNS is, is a, a relatively old technology, relatively old protocol. It's uh, over 30 years old at this point. And um, it's, it's really a fairly open protocol. So again, we believe that these are the core set of technologies that you must have if you really care about you know, application performance, securing your DNS, and, uh, and, and making sure that you're, you're, you're really covered at, in all angles in terms of uh, having best possible uh, DDI services. So uh, to that end, we've put together this, this core bundle and um, again, as David mentioned, uh, this series, we're kind of deep diving on each of the items uh, for the core bundle. The, this is the second installment of the series. The first installment, we covered the, our active trust um, DNS firewall capability in our advanced DNS protection. So uh, if you didn't catch that, that webinar, uh, you'll get a link to that to go back and review it if you like when you get the follow-up email from this, this session. Uh, so with that, this session is all about going in depth on our DNS traffic controller, which is a load balancer or uh, application delivery controller, or whichever terminology you like to use. It, uh, that's its function. So let's, let's talk about what the challenges are there. Um, the challenges around, uh, around applications are when you have application slowness or application failures, that usually results in a lot of phone calls, a lot of headache, and uh, in unhappy customers. And that's where application delivery controllers or load balancers come into play, right? That allows you to ensure that uh, your clients are always going to an available application or an application that's up um, and, and provide better performance um, to your customers by, by geographically 
directing them to the appropriate, uh, most proximal or most performant instance of your application um, from their point of view on the network. The challenge that, that still exists, though, is um, you know, you've, you've got to use DNS. Your applications all use DNS. That's how your clients get the applications. Um, and you've got to have uh, a separate load balancing technology that may or may not use DNS. Um, so you've kind of got now two disparate systems for, for managing how uh, your clients do name resolution to get to their applications. Um, so that you know, results in higher sort of uh, overall costs in terms of you know, purchasing another appliance and paying maintenance on that appliance. Um, and then a specialized skill set of people who, who know how to manage that that um, that appliance and configure the rules and whatnot in order to uh, ensure that you get optimum performance out of that appliance. Those are the sort of challenge challenges that are out there today. Um, what Infoblox DNS Traffic Controller does is allows you to very simply and easily install a license into your uh, if you're an existing Infoblox customer, install a license into your existing appliances and immediately start getting that load balancing or application delivery controller type capability in the infrastructure that you've already got deployed with a very low cost and easy to use license. In addition to that, it's fully integrated into Infoblox's IPAM uh, and Infoblox's uh, user interface. So uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of new learning. You don't have to have um, uh, you know, another separate specialized skill set. It's very similar to the existing workflows that we've had in Infobox all along. Um, if you're not an existing Infobox customer, it's great because you only have one set of appliances that you need to, uh, to incur the cost for, uh, and uh, it simplifies your overall infrastructure, kind of streamlines the management process, um, and really converges two different kind of uh, functionalities into one, one appliance. Um, and then that ultimately re re results in reduced management costs as well, right? Uh, not only from the physical infrastructure, but from having to have two separate types of uh, specialists in terms of uh, understanding load, balance, load balancers in DNS. Okay, so let's take a look side by side at what the actual topology looks like and the behavior uh, of load balancing when you're using um, a traditional load balancing technology versus Infoblox. So on the left side, we're looking at a topology that is a, a non-Infobox, uh, and then on the right side, we are looking at the, the Infobox load balancer topology. So starting on the left side, from the client point of view, um, the client wants to go to myapp.abc.com, so the first thing they need to do is go talk to DNS, which may or may not be Infobox for this diagram. We've got an Infobox device in there. Now, uh, the DNS infrastructure will come back and say, okay, you, you need to go to a certain, this, it'll, it'll give the IP address back to the client, the client at that point will be directed to the load balancer. Um, now the load balancer has its uh, magic inside of it and it will decide you know, which of the application instances is the appropriate instance to go get content from. And that load balancer will, on behalf of the client, go grab the content and uh, pull it back to itself and then essentially proxy that back to the client. And that's how uh, load balancers, traditional load balancers, work for the most part. Now, in the Infobox instance of this, um, it's a little bit simplified uh, compared to what we looked at. Um, Infobox is both the DNS and the load balancer, so we've eliminated a potential point of failure on the network by eliminating uh, a device um, that's, that's, that's essentially extraneous. So what happens is uh, in the Infobox infrastructure, the client says, I need to talk to myapp.abc.com. It goes and talks to DNS. But in this case, Infobox DNS has the specialization in it to go ahead and identify which of the uh, application instances is the, the best instance for the client. And then it simply responds back to the client with the IP address of that application instance um, instead of proxying any uh, of the content back to the client. In that case, the client that is then directed to talk directly to that application instance. Uh, and again, this is much more simplified. We've eliminated uh, an uh, extraneous piece of equipment that is a potential point of failure and, uh, and really just sort of streamlined the client's communication to the application. 
Now let's talk a little bit about how, um, how Infobox does this. So of course we've got uh, what we call a load balanced domain name. So in our previous example, it was myapp.abc.com. Um, and then we've got a pool. So the best way to think about a pool is just kind of like a group of servers. They may be geographically distributed. You may have one or many groups of pools. Uh, I'm sorry, you may have one or many pools for a load balanced domain name. Um, and then within a pool, you've got servers. Um, so that's kind of like the simplest topology. Now, if we expand that out, um, like I mentioned, you can have one load balanced domain name. So in this example, we've got myapp.abc.com, and it's got three different pools. Now, these pools could exist in different regions. So maybe we've got US, Europe, and Asia. Um, and depending on where the client is, we're going to direct them to the pool that makes the most sense. And then within the pool, we've got servers. So uh, we'll, again, we'll do another layer of checking and say, okay, within the, so we've already decided we're going to direct the client to pool three. Now in pool three, we've got a group of servers. Which one of these servers makes the most sense to deliver the application to? So there's multiple layers of logic here that's, uh, that we're using to determine where the best place to, to point the client to is ultimately. Now let's talk a little about the methodologies here. Um, these methodologies apply to both pools and servers. Um, and these are the different load balancing technologies. So there's round robin, which is, which is exactly what you would get if you were to create uh, a DNS entry with multiple, um, uh, multiple uh, IP addresses. It will just sequentially go through each of the IP addresses and indiscriminately direct clients to those IP addresses. We've also got um, ratio, which you can think of as a weighted round robin. So let's say in your servers, you've, let's say in your pool, you've got one server that's twice as big as all the other ones. You might want to weight that server more heavily than the other ones so that it gets more of the queries. So that's a, that's a possibility. Um, in topology, um, this is where we start to get more intelligent and level things like, uh, lever leverage things like GOIP redirection. So um, we can use this topology logic to direct clients to their appropriate region like we mentioned before. And then uh, finally is the global availability. So um, this is uh, where we um, direct, uh, direct someone by um, geographic location, but also making sure that they're going to the appropriate uh, availability uh, instance as well. So again, these different load balancing paradigms can be used at both the pool level, if you're looking at the diagram below, and at the server level. So there's two layers where we implement that logic here. Now, um, there's, uh, before I talked about magic where we determine what type of, what, you know, what server is the best server in order to uh, direct a client to, this is the specifics of that magic. So we've got a couple of, di a few different tests where we can go out and intelligently interact with, with servers and applications and identify how they're performing. Um, first of all, we can do just plain HTTP. So if you've got a, a web app, we can go out and uh, just do sort of generic server response testing. So we can go out and check for a, a 200 response. And uh, based on that, we can direct, you know, uh, as long as it's giving a 200, we can direct the client to that application. But we can also do more intelligent checking there. Um, we can also go and, and look for specific piece of content. So, um, you know, for example, if you've got, um, a maintenance page, when you're doing maintenance on an application, the client will still get a 200 back, but maybe they'll get a message that says under maintenance. So what we could do here is say, um, look at the content that comes back from the web server, and as long as it does not contain the string under maintenance, then, uh, then direct the client there. Otherwise, don't direct them. Um, so that's an example of how we can intelligently do HTTP checking. So it can be, um, you know, does not have content or matches a certain piece of content. Um, so again, very flexible rules there. We can actually do SNMP checking. So we can go out and grab, uh, you know, maybe CPU or memory utilization metrics from a particular server and prefer to, to direct clients to the instance of the application that sits on the server that has the lowest CPU and or memory utilization. So that's really powerful in terms of ensuring that the applications are getting, um, are responding as quick as possible. Um, we can do just very generic sort of TCP handshaking. So maybe you've got some proprietary application using some proprietary protocol um, that we can't really go in there and, uh, and understand the application's response. You can use uh, a, just a generic TCP check. 
We can do uh, some, some SIP communication. Um, we do have an understanding of the SIP protocol, so if you're, doing to, uh, if you're delivering telephony services, we can take advantage of that. Um, we have understanding of PDP, and of course we can do just generic ICMP. Now, you can also use combinations of these rules. So let's say you've got an application that, uh, that we don't natively understand the protocol. Well, you could go and do SNMP against the server that's hosting it, check the server health. You could also go and do TCP against the port of the, uh, of the server, uh, of the, uh, the application instance to make sure that's responding, and then you can just do ICMP for a, a sanity check and use those three rules in combination to determine whether or not the application is performing. So again, really powerful capabilities in terms of understanding how applications perform. Now, uh, a couple of screen screenshots. If you're familiar with the Infobox interface, um, we're looking at our IPAM interface here. One of the powerful things about uh, integrating IPAM with your load balancing is we can actually do load balancing on your internal IP address space. So of course we can do it on external, but we're uniquely able to do that on your non-routable internet IP address space. Um, what we're showing here in this instance is we've used something in Infobox called extensible attributes. These are basically tags. You can think of them like tags, where we've tagged networks with, uh, with our own information uh, about what, where, that, where that network exists. So we've got a region tab, we've got a country tab, we've got a site, and we've got a building tab uh, tag in here. So those extensible attributes are what identify where a network exists, and these networks are inheritable and overridable. So if you create a subnet within that, it'll automatically inherit those properties unless you explicitly override them with some other value. So they're very flexible in terms of managing um, how you, your, what your network topology looks like. Now we can take these, these tags for GLIP directing uh, on your private IP address space. So that's very powerful. And that's something that you can only get if you've integrated your IPAM with your load balancing technology. Um, and in here, we can see how we're, we're building out that topology in terms of uh, how these exist. And what happens in the back end is this topology gets converted into a MaxMind database format, and that's what the load balancer uses to direct traffic. And these, again, these extensible attributes can be anything. It's not, uh, not specifically this format uh, in terms of, um, you know, uh, uh, country, region, uh, so on and so forth. This can be any topology that you like. So it's 100% customizable. You can go down to, uh, you know, the, the, the floor of the building or the quadrant of the building or, or whatever granularity fits your needs. Um, and then finally, uh, it's all fully integrated within the Infoblox UI. So uh, within here, we can see very easily the relationship between domain names, um, the actual Infoblox devices that are serving them, and we even get sort of visibility in terms of a, a graphical UI uh, of how this is all configured and what the relationship is here. Now, the nice thing is, if you're looking at this graph, um, I can click on any one of these items and look at what the relationship is of the, the, the applications that, it's ho that are hosted in the infrastructure that supports it. So, for example, I could click on the domain name, and then it would show me all of the pools that support that and all of the servers that support the pools, or I could click on a server, and it will show me all of the pools that that server participates in, and it will show me all of the applications that that server hosts. So very, uh, very transparent, very easy to get visualization of the relationship between all of the components that, uh, that serve up the application ultimately to the clients. Now, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the customer success that we've had with DTC. Um, one of our, our lar large and successful customers is, uh, is Hershey. Um, I think everybody knows Hershey, especially this time of year where we're, <laughs> we're giving away a lot of Hershey's to um, everyone dressed up in lovely costumes. Uh, but uh, Hershey is America's beloved ch uh, chocolate candy maker. The challenge with, uh, with Hershey is they needed a DR solution, disaster recovery solution, for their internal applications. So uh, their existing load balancers didn't have the ability to integrate with IPAM and didn't have the ability to, to figure out how to handle DR for that. So they had all kinds of scripts where they would uh, you know, have to break the glass and push the red button and if there was a DR and then uh, hope that all those scripts were kept up to date and appropriately redirect all of the, the client activity over to the, uh, the DR site for internal IP address space. The, right, the external IP address uh, DR was, was fairly well covered, but they didn't have uh, a really clean way to do this internally. 
And that's where Hershey found that uh, DTC was a perfect solution for them. So um, Hershey was an existing Infoblox customer. Um, it became very easy for them to just uh, upgrade their, their, their existing infrastructure with, with the uh, DTC technology. Um, again, it was just a simple uh, license installment for them. Um, so they installed the license and uh, leveraged their existing uh, extensible attributes or EAs to uh, set up the uh, geographical um, redirection for their disaster recovery. And now if they have any sort of application failure and they need to, to, to large scale redirect all of their internal um, customers to their disaster recovery site for their internal IP address space, it just happens automatically. Um, DTC determines that the application failed in the primary site and just automatically redirects everybody over to the uh, secondary disaster recovery site. Um, the next instance that I'd like to talk about of success is for a global financial organization. Um, so this is a, 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 an account that we can't divulge the name for, um, but they're a, a worldwide financial firm that does a lot of trading. Um, and as you know, in the trading environment, milliseconds mean, uh, mean uh, a lot when it comes to the success of your ability to, 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 be, to, to successfully uh, you know, execute against the changes in the market. So, you know, high, high, light latency is critical for them. Um, they've implemented uh, Apache Mesos clusters in order to maximize their ability to do uh, analytics and, and execute these trades as quickly as possible. And they needed a way to load balance across those clusters in order to, uh, to do the trades um, in the, the most effective and efficient geography and in the most reasonably available server. So again, you know, time is of the essence when we're doing these trading uh, activities and, um, and DTC was the right solution for them. So um, they implemented DTC, they added again to their existing grid and uh, it cost them significantly less than it would have for them to go out and buy a, you know, a completely new um, load balancing architecture, um, you know, completely separate appliances, completely separate maintenance contracts, um, completely separate knowledge workers to go and handle that skill set. So um, this worked out really well for this uh, global financial organization. And then the final use case uh, was a large scale uh, tier one service provider, mobile telco operator. Um, uh, basically, um, this was uh, you know a great example of leveraging our uh, our expertise in, again in uh, in non routing load non routed IP address based load balancing um, within these gigantic telco networks. Um, they they're always looking for ways in order to route uh, voice traffic as as efficiently as possible. Um, and enable customers to make Wi-Fi calls whenever they're in their home country, right? So again, leveraging our expertise uh, about uh, the, their private network and their private IP address space, we were able to help them identify when a customer is on their home network and be able to, uh, to use Wi-Fi calling to avoid the roaming capabilities. So really great successful use case with a large scale deployment. Um, tier one uh, service providers, as you can imagine, have huge networks that extend um, across the world. So this is, you know, again, a great instance of our ability to scale and, uh, and meet the unique demand for the customer. Okay, with that, I'll uh, hand it back over to David to talk about next steps. Thank you, Roger. I uh, appreciate that. Always good to, always good to learn more uh, about the NS traffic control. So in terms of uh, next steps, what, we, what you may want to do uh, after hearing this, um, if, if you're interested in the, uh, the, uh, the uh, core promotion program, uh, you can contact us. Um, and the best thing to do would be to have one of our, one of our sales representatives or, and or our channel partner take a look at your configuration, what you have today, create a quote uh, or a, and a proposal uh, that you can take a look at. and. Uh, and then, and then we can go from there. So review that, uh, and uh, we'll work on that and see if that makes sense to you. Also, be very interested in just discussing uh, which your migration options and plans and needs are uh, as relates to this promotion uh, or DTC uh, in particular, or any of the other uh, uh, any of the other software modules that we um, uh, that we spoke of. Uh, and now, uh, the good news here. Um, is that our audience has been listening and they have posed uh, several questions for us. Uh, so uh, if 
transcribed a few over. Um, I, uh, they kind of ping, ping pong back and forth between the promotion as well as DTC. So I'll um, I'll take some of these and then I'll hand some of these off to Roger. And then so sometimes questions for both other questions will revisit the, the Q and A bar again and make sure uh, that there's uh, nothing there left unanswered. So our first question is. Well, I thought I answered this question. Perhaps I mumbled, but uh, let me um, uh, let me let me bring it up and make sure that everyone understands. The question is: Do I have to be an Infobox customer t today to take advantage of the promotion you mentioned? And the answer is no. Um, we're absolutely uh, happy to talk to you about the promotion, the terms, uh, the special pricing. Uh, if you are currently uh, an Infobox user, or if you're not, so whatever you're using today, uh, be it Infobox, be it uh, be it paper and pencil, or Excel, or or another solution. Um, we'll have to talk to you about that and see if our promotion works for you. Second question uh, also relates to the promotion. It's, uh, the question is, why is Infobox emphasizing subscription licenses within this promotion? Um, we're emphasizing subscription licenses in the subscription model because customers have asked us, uh, asked us to do that. Uh, a lot of the software industry um, and other parts of technology are moving toward, towards a subscription basis. Uh, the reasons are, are financial as well, well, financial, to give line of sight visibility on future spending, to move money from CapEx to OpEx, and just to give you more freedom. Um, and to some extent, it gives us an incentive to make sure we win your business by, by, by re-winning subscription licenses. So uh, customers asked, uh, and we are, following, uh, we are following your lead on this one. So that's why um, we're, uh, we're doing this on a subscription license basis. Um, here's a DTC question. Roger. Is DNS traffic control limited to external traffic? Uh, it is not. So um, uh, there's, we actually get a couple of questions on this. So uh, it is not limited to external traffic. Um, it, can, uh, it can do load balancing on internet routable IP address space. It can do load balancing on, uh, on internal IP address space, again, using those extensible attributes as I discussed before. Um, and then uh, another question that came in was around, can it, can it redirect internet routable traffic to internal IP address space? Uh, so if you think about the topology, the question is, if the servers themselves have non-routable IP address space, um, can a client from the internet uh, be directed to those? And uh, the answer is yes, but it's slightly different than, than uh, a load balancer that does the proxy on your behalf. So you would have to have the appropriate NAT set up for each one of the server instances, and then the DNS would redirect to the NAT, uh, the NAT um, uh, IP address, which, which would then deliver that. So um, yes, the answer is yes, you can do that. Uh, the, the configuration is just slightly different than you would do with, uh, with the conventional type of load balancer. Right. Um, another question on the on uh, DNS traffic control: Does DNS traffic control impact the DDI performance of your appliance? Um, yeah, so there is an impact um, on a couple of places, mainly because we're doing the help checks, but also we're doing the evaluation um, of where the best place to direct the client is. So um, there is an impact. Um, if you have concerns about that, uh, your Infobox partner or your Infobox account team can help you understand what the impact is. Uh, we, we do have very specific sizing and calculation uh, capabilities, so we can look at your um, your grid and how it performs, and uh, and, and look at the, the the amount of load balancing uh, load that you'd like to put onto those systems, and ensure that it's going to meet your need there. And so here's a question uh, about the promotion, uh, and it is, can I still buy NIOS and other uh, software for the new Trinsic appliances with a perpetual license? And the answer is yes. Um, we are not, uh, we're not mandating anybody uh, move towards a subscription license. We're simply offering that as an option. Uh, but if you prefer the perpetual license uh, that we've sold for many years, uh, that, uh, that option absolutely remains open. Um, here's another question. Uh, I'm, uh, it's a little bit, little bit open. I think it's related to the promotion, um, so I'll give it a tr I'll give it an answer related to the promotion. Uh, Roger, if you think I'm wrong, please please correct me. Uh, the question is, do we need to buy one license for all members? So I'm interpreting that to mean uh, when you look at our promotion, you need to buy a license for all modules 
for all appliances. Um, if I'm interpreting the question correctly, the answer to that is no. Um, you need to buy a license for all of the modules for at least one member in your uh, Infobox appliance grid. But uh, we understand that there are many configurations where you simply don't need um, all of those modules running on every appliance member, uh, and uh, that is not a requirement. Let, let me go ahead and answer that if it is posed towards uh, load balancing capability. So uh, the answer is, uh, if you're asking that in regards to load balancing, the answer is it's not one license for the entire grid. So you would need to have a license for every member that is going to do load balancing. Obviously, if the member is not going to do load balancing, it does not need the license. Perfect. Um, and we have, let's see, I just want to make sure, I'm, I'm running through my list um, and make sure I wrote everything down properly. Oh, okay, last question. Um, uh, your promotion includes a combination of DDI and four uh, and four specific uh, software modules. Uh, can I change those? Um, and the answer is uh, no. Um, at this point in time, the modules that we designated uh, are, in fact, uh, the essence of the promotion. Uh, DDI, uh, virtual ADP, DTC, uh, and reporting and analytics. Um, we found that that combination makes the most sense, uh, and for reasons of just of just making it easy to order um, and uh, just easy, easy to process for, for both you and for us, uh, we, we uh, established the guardrails around uh, having to order that particular combination of modules. Uh, if something different is needed, well, obviously we can entertain a conversation. But the promotional pricing and the terms and conditions apply to the, uh, uh, the modules that we specified earlier in the presentation. So um, I've seen no late questions come in. And um, I think we've addressed all those. Uh, after this, uh, after this webinar, um, we will be sending out an email uh, with, a, with a few questions about how effective it was. Uh, and I believe we're sending out also a copy of the slides for your for your reference. So um, uh, you can always get back to us as well. So thank you for attending. We appreciate your time. We know it's valuable. Uh, and if you're carving out a little bit of your day for us, uh, that that is much appreciated. So uh, thank you for, again, for attending our webinar. Uh, and uh, please join us uh, on one of our future webinars. Uh, and uh, we look forward to doing business with you. Thank you very much.